Just one. Allah who Samad. Allah, the self-sufficient, the independent, meaning that everything, everything depends upon Him, but He doesn't depend upon His creation because He's self-existent. Yeah, He's eternal. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Meaning that Allah does not have a lineage. Yeah, Allah does not have a lineage like us. We are parents, right? If, imagine if, imagine if, sorry. Ima, imagine if God has a lineage, that means He has a beginning. And imagine if God has parents, that means his parents are superior to God. So how can how can something be superior to God, right? So Allah does not have children. He doesn't have wife, kids, right? And then there is nothing like unto him. So this is the definition of Allah. So you, you've already acknowledged that there must be something that created the universe, right? It would make sense. It would make sense. And so again, we, I'm human and I think like a human. Of course. And my, 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 my reasoning like can... Human. Of course. No, no, we just want you to yeah. think like yeah. human. <laughs> yeah. So would you agree that this something that created the universe must be unique in every sense from the creation? Yeah, I, I agree that if there yeah. were to be a creator, it would have to exist independently of Correct. our existence. Correct. Now, if we put this in litmus test, the, the, the definition of Allah, Right? Nobody will be able to meet the uh, nobody will be able to meet the criteria. So, for example, Allah is one and only indivisible. We know from from the natural world that everything is made into parts, into components. Right? But this Creator, by definition, is not made into parts. So this is uniqueness, and He's one. Allah who summit, Allah the absolute, the, the independent. All of us, we depend. Imagine if we if we abstain from yeah no, bro. imagine if we abstain from food and drink for three days, we're gonna die. Right? So we depend upon food and drink for our existence but almighty God doesn't depend upon anything he's self-existent he doesn't need to be fed he doesn't need to Allah says in the Quran that he does not require to be fed yeah because he's self-existent so this, this is the uniqueness of the Creator he begets not nor is he begotten we as human beings as well as the animal kingdom and plant kingdom, right we have children we have offspring almighty God does not have offspring why, why do people uh, why do people procreate to pass from their genes to the next generation to preserve their their, their, their existence almighty god does not need that because he's all powerful you know almighty so he doesn't need to have children right well let me call there is nothing like unto him so that's the god that we believe in we don't believe in the concept of god in christianity where god became a man and he died because how can god die this is creation god is supposed to be symbolic in my opinion a symbol, but they, I'm not Christian. I know, I know. But they believe that Jesus died for the sins, Jesus is God, Jesus became a man. But the moment you become a man, you can't be imperfect and perfect at the same time. Because human beings are fallible. Almighty God is infallible. You cannot be infallible and fallible at the same time. Either you're infallible or fallible. So this definition of Allah in the Quran, as I demonstrate to you, is unique in every sense from his creation. And that's who we believe in. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So now we believe that this Almighty God, He will not leave us alone, right? Because He created us. So the one, like for example, if I was, if I was to show you a phone, right? If I, should, if I was to show you my phone, right? Do you know from your natural inclination that this has been created by someone who is knowledgeable, someone who has the will and the power to bring this into existence, right? So if, for example, my phone is faulty, who do I go to? The phone repair man, right? The one who gives us the instruction manual. So there has to be objective guidance. So imagine if I if I was to use uh, another guidance, let's say Apple, Apple phone, and I tried to figure out how to use the Samsung phone, would it function? No, it wouldn't function because if I use the if I use the instruction manual from Apple to Samsung, it's not going to function. Imagine we as human beings, imagine this phone here, no instruction manual. If there's a problem, right? Imagine everyone tried and tested. What's going to happen to the phone? We're going to break it. So imagine we're talking about human beings. If you allow me to call the human beings as a machine, then we're more complex than the phone. So rationally thinking, do you not think that the creator will give us objective guidance? He will not leave us alone. Since he created us, he knows what's good and bad for us. So almighty God, by his wisdom, he sends prophets and messengers, right? So we believe in, in, uh, we believe in Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. All of them were prophets sent by God, but they were mortal beings like us. Right, inna, inna ana basiru misluna, that indeed I am a mortal like you. So they're not God, but they were sent by God with revelation. And in every prophet, they were given miracles. So at the time of Moses, peace be upon him, uh, at the time of Moses, peace be upon him, the, the miracle was he was able to turn the staff into a snake. Now, why is that a miracle? Because the, the, the staff is made up of wood, 
and he's becoming a snake, right? That is a miracle because it defies the the um, the, 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 the the natural the laws of physics, right? At the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, the it was the age of medicine. So Jesus, peace be upon. We believe in Jesus, by the way. But we, what, he's, very familiar with this song. Very good. Talking very good. Very good. Myself, let me let me know. Let, let me know if you have any questions because I don't like to make it as a monologue. You get it preaching. Yeah, but but what we say is that Jesus, peace be upon, him, used to perform miracles by God's permission. So he used to touch the person and they become healed, right? So this is a miracle. But now you'll ask you this question, but these are all time bound. Like, how can I verify that, you know, these are actual miracles? I, I haven't lived at the time of Moses. I haven't lived at the time of Jesus, peace be upon him. We say that because this miracle was only meant to convince their people. Yeah, so at the time of Moses, peace be upon the Israelites, that miracle was only meant for them. It wasn't meant for us. So all the prophets and messengers, they were sent for their nation only. But the uniqueness of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is that he's not only sent to the Jews or the Arabs, he was sent for the whole of humanity for all times. Because the Quran mentions in chapter 21, verse 107, that we have sent you not on Muhammad except as a mercy to all the worlds. Almighty God says as well in Surah, in, in, in Surah Sabah, Allah mentions that, illa nas bashira wa nadira, that I have said, we have not sent you on Muhammad except as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning people against sin. So, but most of the human beings yet do not know. So Almighty God here, this message of the Quran is meant to be for the whole of humanity. This is the reason why the claim is, we believe that the Quran is the miracle that you can test today. What is the miracle of the Quran? At the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, the Arab society, they used to pride their own Arabic language. They used to pride their own Arabic language. Like for example, like have you gone through university or? Yes, I mean, yeah? yes. So we have like graduation ceremonies and we get our parents, right? Their, their form of graduation is if somebody became a poet. Poet. Yeah, a poet. So they used to pride themselves in their Arabic language. So the Quran was revealed to challenge the people, right? So it's still, in, it's still the Arabic language, but now Almighty God is put in challenge. If you're able to replicate a single chapter like the Quran, then you have falsified the Quran. This is a challenge to all human beings. Right? That you are familiar. That's also another to 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 to, to produce a, a chapter like the Quran, and the small the smallest chapter in the Quran only consists of ten words. Five of the greatest poets at the time of the Prophet peace be upon him, they couldn't meet the challenge. You know what they say? They say that this is they had to resort to sihr magic. They had to resort to something that is supernatural because they don't have any naturalistic explanation. Where did this man get this from? Like for example, if I was to tell you. You know this building right here, right? Every, you can see that it's made out of bricks, right? The concrete is touching. If I was to tell you that I'm able to construct a building, but none of them are touching each other, can anyone? It's exactly. So this is the miracle of the Quran. This is the miracle of the Quran, which is that it's still in the Arabic language, but yet nobody is able to replicate. Many, many people who knows the Arabic language, they cannot meet the challenge of the Quran even up until today. And the Quran mentions in chapter two, verse twenty-three, that. Um, and if you are in doubt as to what we have revealed to our servant, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, then produce a chapter like it and call your witnesses helpers besides God if you're speaking the truth. So you may ask to yourself, well... Your challenge, so the challenge was to write some sort of religious text? No, to, to replicate the, uh, the Quran, the, the construction. Couldn't you just copy it? No, so see, this is the miracle. Okay. This is the miracle, which is oh, style. style. The sti yeah. Not only the, st yeah, the style, the contents, right? And nobody's able to meet that challenge. And look at the assurity of the next verse. It says, if you cannot, and you will never be able to, then fear the fire whose fuel is men and stones prepared for the disbelievers. Okay, okay. Imagine this. Was yeah. the Quran given to Muhammad by God, or did uh, Muhammad write the Quran? No, we believe that the Quran is a revelation given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, through the angel Gabriel. Now, the primary transmission of the Quran is oral, then it was written down. Right? So the primary transition is oral. That's the reason why many, many like people, millions of people around the world, they're able to memorize the whole Quran. And this is the miracle because the majority of the Muslims, they're not Arabic speakers. How are they able to memorize 600 pages? And this is the promise that Allah makes in the Quran. That we have indeed made the Quran easy for remembrance, easy for memorization. So is there any who would take admonition? Imagine, Almighty God is making a promise. I will make my book easy to be memorized by hundreds and millions of non-Arabic speakers. I could bring you a six-year-old kid, a four-year-old kid, memorize the whole Quran. I've doesn't even know the Arabic language. Yeah, How is that possible? Uh, this is one of the miracles. It's impressive. it's impressive. And another one is the challenge that you can take upon. So you're not an Arabic speaker, right? No problem. 
the Quran mentions in chapter 4 verse 82. It says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّلُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ إِنِّ الْغَيْرِ لَهُ لَوْ جِدَ فِي إِخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا That do they not consider the Qur'an with care? Had it been from anyone besides Allah, they will find there are many contradictions. So look at the claim that the Qur'an is making. That if you're able to find a single contradiction, you have falsified the Qur'an. Because Almighty God, He's supposed to be all-knowing. How can He contradict Himself? For example, like, I read the Bible Himself, Masha, He's read the Bible, right? There are tons of contradictions in the Bible. Yes. For example, if you read in 2 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 22, that uh, a king, uh, Ahaziah, if I'm not mistaken, was 22 years old when he reigned. If you read in Kings chapter 8, verse 26, he reigned at the age of 42. How can he reign 22 years old at 42 years old at the same time? So a contradiction by definition means a, a particular event that cannot happen at the same time. So how can a person reign, the same person, how can he reign at the age of 22, but at the same time he reigned at the age of 42? That doesn't make sense. The Bible sense. was written 300 years after Jesus Christ died. Exactly. So. exactly. so you cannot believe that the Creator will make mistakes. But this is the challenge that the Quran makes. I was going to say that yeah, the sure. initial point, is there anything there that you disagree with? That seemed quite coherent yeah. in the way it's put across. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. You good? I need to make a move, inshallah. I need to make a move, Akhi. Are you are leaving already? No, no, no. You've been here for a while? I've been here for a while. I need to be... That says that we're born believing God as, as Muslim. The cameras is just for educational purposes. It goes into YouTube. But you've been very respectful. I'm very uh, No, seriously. No, you, 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 you're doing very well. What it is, is you, people film it openly here, so you have nothing to worry. So the reason why we're call, uh, speaking to you, uh, Jack, is it? Yes. Yeah, Jack, is to recognize your fitrah, your innate disposition to believe in God. I have. Hence, that's why we say when someone converts to Islam, we don't say you converted, you say we re you revert it. Reverted. Yeah, so we believe every single human being is born being a Muslim. Believing Muslim means is the one who submits himself to the Creator. So the tree is a Muslim because he only follows the law of nature and he submits to the Creator, the sun, the moon, everything. So does a human being uh, young as a baby, but then it's the parents that indoctrinate them and to believe, the, allow them to, to believe in different systems. Yeah? yeah so, and this so is that, what Prophet that's, Muhammad that's has said. For religion. It's because I've seen the way that religion has been damaging the people over thousands of years and indoctrinating them to think that ways... I'm not, I'm not saying that Islam is damaging for everyone. I'm not saying that Christianity no, but then, is damaging for All right, the reason why... Go on, go on. Go on. It's, it's good point. I, I agree I, I come from a place where Christians are brainwashed by these churches that are money-making schemes. And all they do is listen to whatever the preacher says, and it's how he interprets the book. And it's damaging to how we think as humans. And you know why people I, are leaving it? If you truly like believe in any, any of the Abrahamic faiths, I believe that you are challenged to challenge your faith. You were supposed to go out and accept Islam. Answer. I would I say accept this. I agree with you. Accept Islam. And the reason why a lot of people like yourself are leaving Christianity is they cannot reconcile with their with their fitrah. So Christianity can be pushed down to you in so they can shove it right up in your throat, but deep in your heart will not recognize. Your heart only recognizes Islam. So what I'm saying to you is you've got you yourself, you have your fitrah, and you have many people and uh, throwing out their revelation at you the Bible, the Torah, and other religious books, but the only one your heart will accept, confidently we say this, is Islam. And you can put that to the test. Islam rationally and logically no, no, convinces like you. No, no, seriously. <laughs> convincingly. Like no, no, it, it convinces. But, hey, no, but, does say no, but Paul, well, listen, Paul, there's, a, there's <laughs> no, no. What we, these are secondary steps. We don't encourage people to say, oh, stop eating pork if they don't even reject the Creator. So they are steps. And the Prophet told us the first thing you should call towards a someone is to believe in the Creator and divine revelation and the messengers of God. And once you submit to that and you accept, Except that pork and these other shortcomings you have, flour doesn't grow in a day, so, and so, then later on you stop that. So, so and actually, uh, let me just finish this. Uh, okay, There's okay, a good okay. point. The the ruling of Islam came gradually. So when it, when alcohol was ba banned, actually came in a gradual mode. And Aisha actually said a lot of people have been frightened away or perhaps not even accepted in faith if if all the rulings in, uh, of God came in once. So. Again, we believe in the, the, the Creator is wise and He knows what's good for us, us and what harms us. Hence, that's why he, he put out laws that we should sustain from it. Think of this way, yeah? God has told you you can eat anything you like, apart from certain things like pets and animals that you shouldn't eat. 
eat and, and obviously pig. Yeah? Anything else is allowed for you. You can drink any other type of drink except alcohol. So, so actually the dues, the dues of God is tripled. Ten times and what we shouldn't do. Alright? The limitation is just a small. So, but these are secondary steps. I would, I don't want you to focus on these things and be narrow-minded. Well, you should focus on. Explain it to yeah. me. That, when, you, when, you go, yeah. when, you, when you go to your day of judgment, he said you're walking on a sword, and, jo and God has an angel that counts all of your good deeds and all of your bad deeds. Yeah. And if you do Ramadan, then your good deeds are multiplied by five, ten. Multiplied. Ten. And I, I just. Don't yeah, but then. Know. Oh, cool. I, I believe that if I'm a good person, then that, that According to who, it. though? According to who? Yeah. According to who? Yeah. According to who? <laughs> Me. <laughs> I'll give you an example. If you have an employee, yeah? yeah. Employed by McDonald's. Say McDonald's. Yeah. No. So, Uncle, you wanted to say something? Yeah. Go on. I respect what you say about food and drink, and maybe you have the other habits. That's the way we are, humans. We, we, we were not born yesterday, so we develop over time. I mix with friends, I mix with family, and I pick up those habits. So you pick up similar habits, different to my habits. So, like the brother said, the food and drink is secondary, it's not number one. But wouldn't that count as a bad deed every time that I drink alcohol? No, 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 no. First, you have to accept the, uh, the uh, testimonial of God. So once you accept God exists and you fully wholeheartedly testify that, then your faith will grow into that and then you will, it will make sense to you, okay, if there is an a old and uh, powerful being in that created me and that I should submit to, uh, to him, then I should do what is uh, asked of me. And you can still eat pork, but it will be a minus, it's still sin, but then God will, you will be required to, to seek forgiveness of God and you work your way, do you see? But it's not your uh, first hurdle. So, so the Arabs, <coughs> the, those who were, the Prophet talked to directly, they had similar problems, but they come secondary, exactly secondary. The alcohol, the eating, it's all secondary. What's number one is the belief in the one that's number one. That's number one. If that actually makes sense to you, <coughs> everything else is negotiable. Everything else. If, if you believe in the existence of one God who is a source of beauty, wisdom, power and knowledge, and He is created the, the everything, He was the first before me and you existed, before the planets existed, before even the angels existed, there was nobody, there was nobody, there was nothingness, <coughs> He existed. <coughs> that, that is the true meaning of first. And then also, another of his name is, is the last, which means everything that you see now, everything you see now has got an expiry date. Everything. I have you, uh, the bag that you've got, the bag you've got has got expiry date. Even that tree, that tree may, somebody may tell you it's actually 100 years old. And it might be true, but it's got an expiry date. I don't know when it's going to disappear. So he is the last, and, and that means, according to Muslim belief, is that everything will perish because they will reach their expiry date, except him. So the last seconds of this life will be all the angels have died because God decided they, they expired. And then there'll be only him and the angel of death who has the task of collecting the souls. And then the dialogue will take place like this. Angel of death, who is left? And he will say, my Lord, nobody except you and me. And he said, I have decreed that everything that I created will end. And I'm going to take your soul. The angel of death, he will take his soul. And it will be nobody except him. That is the true definition of the last. Just to add that on a scientific ground, on a scientific ground, everything in this universe is contingent upon something. Yep. Yeah. So, and therefore, Allah is the necessary being that nothing, that, that all that contingent is, that things. Wait, wait, wait. That's, that's where that's all where contingent agree. things depend upon. You can't have uh, dependent things going finite. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. So the tree depends on the sun, the sun depends on something. So therefore, everything in our universe uh, depends upon Allah. And this is what my uncle uh, uh, said already, that everything will come to an end. 
except yeah. Allah. And, and, yeah. Yeah. and this, and this is, is what the being we're calling towards you, brother. And this is like three words in the Quran. If you if you are lucky to read this from cover to cover, I will read it at some point. You will come across a verse. It's a gift. You come across a verse. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So you 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 come yeah, you'll, in English. You'll come across a verse in here that says what I just said to you in three words. I mean. Because we don't, we, we are not as efficient as God. But you will see it here that says, everything perishes except God. Three, four words describe what I've just said to you in in few in many minutes. So everything perishes, and so so there are 99 names I just shared with you too. Yeah. The first and the last, and then another of his names which we love Muslims. I mean, any Muslims that love the word would love that one, which is the most merciful. Because without that mercy, without that mercy, I wouldn't even be able to let water go down my my digestive system. It was through his mercy created a system in me to allow me not only to drink it, but to allow me also to get rid of it at the end. That's through his mercy. And he said to us that whatever you see around you of mercy, whatever you see, even the animals treating each other in a kind way, that's part of one part of 100 because God decided to send down to the universe, the whole universe, one part out of 100 and he saved for us all 99 parts and took for the day of judgment because the day of judgment is one of the most um, uh, uh, difficult time where all of us will gather together because we all will die eventually and but what we will rise once together so if you if you die in the sea if I die in the land they bury me it doesn't matter our body will start collecting and then we rise up and when we rise up we will be in only one place whatever we wear from the time of Adam until the last person to live on this earth we're gonna be standing there together Wow. Then after that, yes, we'll be standing there and uh, the sun will start coming closer and closer. Our prophet says to us that sun will come closer a distance of a mile of the heads. So everybody will start sweating. And it depends on their deeds in this life. Some of them, the sweat will come to the ankles, which is fine. Some of them will come to the knees and some of them will... Oh. Huh? You got a bug. <laughs> oh, bug. Maybe she's trying to come and listen. She's trying to come and listen. <laughs> so, and, and, and those who are evil on this earth, they will unfortunately drown in their sweat. Drown in their sweat. Oh, and then, horrible death. And then, yeah, and then everybody, everybody will say, can we, can we start the Day of Judgment? We can't take it anymore because, you know, the situation is very hard. The sun is very close, one mile distance, everybody is sweating, and, and the Day of Judgment will be established. Me, you, and everybody will be waiting to receive a book similar to this. But that book is special to you and special to me. In it, from page one to the last page, is going to be everything that you said and everything you did. The good and the evil. It'll, it'll be written there. What was your name again? Mohammed. Mohammed. Nice to meet you. Jackson. And your name? Jackson. Jackson, nice to meet you. We don't want to keep you long. Yeah, it's yes. a pleasure so talking to you. No, no, no. Yeah. It's a pleasure been it's talking to you. Absolutely. What we're trying to do here is give you that. That was the invitation to Islam. You Thank only you. need two things, two things to accept Islam. To accept that God alone is the one worthy of worship. And, no, and, and, and he has no partners, no one else beside him. And you should submit to him and accept uh, the revelation of God. The four revelations that we mentioned, the Torah, the Quran, and the Quran being the final one, and they to accept the Prophet Muhammad as the last final messenger sent to you. Jesus and Moses were not sent to me and you. They were local prophets sent to their people at the time. So these are the only two things, because the prophets and messengers came to teach you, you, you about God. We don't worship them, we worship God how they worship God. They were perfect and, and, and human beings that believed in God and called people to call good. But the options is yours, to either believe in God or not to believe in God, and you will have the, uh, the consequences of after, after that. As the the book. I will read this. No, yeah. Read it. If and you just, have any questions, when you are us. alone, when you are alone, just make, yeah. just, uh, just ask four words, just say four words. God guide me to the truth. God guide me to the truth? Yeah, please God, guide me to the truth. Whatever that is, and you'll find it. Awesome. No thank worries. you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. No. <laughs> what are oh, these? Is there a microphone? It's like, it's like operation. <laughs>